Hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Today's Bible study will be a continuation. We've started in the book of Revelation. And with this video, we are doing chapter 6. And we just want to keep in mind that this is a vision John is receiving from the Heavenly Father where he's showing him the plan of salvation from the heavenly's point of view, but then also as it is going forth in the earth. Just as the Heavenly Father has decreed and declared, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So even though he's seeing into heaven, he's also seeing into earth because he's seeing the plan of salvation going forward in the earth, okay? And we want to, um, before we get into chapter 6, I want to take you back over certain things that we've already discussed in order to help you to understand what we're getting ready to go into for chapter 6. Okay, chapter 5, verse 5 is one of the verses I want to uh, go back into where uh, John says, And one of the elders said to me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, we know that's Jesus Christ, he's prevailed to open the book and to loose the seal, the seven seals that are in the book. Okay, so we see that uh, Jesus Christ is being stated as the one that is going to loose the seven seals. And as we have stated, the seven seals are the seven spirits of God that are before the throne. And spirits are angels, 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 angels. All and all that are in heaven are, are angels, okay? <clears throat> Every indiv individual force, uh, pres uh, present, presentation of a being is an angelical being, a celestial being in the heavens, okay? And once you've been birthed into the Holy Spirit, that is what you become, okay? Because that is what the Holy Spirit is. It's heavenly, and that is what it produces. It, it, it converts into a celestial being to be a part of the heavenly. So we see that Jesus Christ was able to loose those seven spirits into the earth, okay? And as we can see, going back over into, let's see, where's that other verse at that actually states... The seven spirits, verse 6, we go down and we see. And I looked, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, Christ Jesus, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Okay? So here we see that he also sees Jesus Christ loosing those spirits into the earth to go forth into all the earth. Now, as we begin to read chapter 6, we're going to see those seven spirits, those seven sealed spirits, because the sealing of the Holy Spirit is what is the seals, what uh, the word seal is being used to represent that, that individual that has been stamped, that has been uh, converted by the Holy Spirit. So they've been sealed with the seal of the promise of the Holy Spirit. And we can see where, uh, let's see here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go there where we can see that the Holy Spirit is what seals us unto the Heavenly Father. Chapter 1, verse 13 and where the word seal derives from. And that's Ephesians as it pertains to the word of God. And as God uses us, I want to say. So that's Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. And he says here, uh, Paul is talking to the Ephesians. He says, in whom ye also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also... After that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, okay? So we see that the Holy Spirit seals, okay? It um, converts and it closes the matter between mankind or that individual and God, okay? It is for mankind if all would believe, but all are not going to believe. But to the individual that does believe, it seals the promise of the Holy Spirit. It seals them into the kingdom of God. Okay, so it says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. 
okay so that begins every other promise once an individual has been converted sealed by the holy spirit that activates every other promise through the power of the holy ghost for that individual okay so another is there another scripture I want to go into? I think that's going to be it. So we're going to start here with chapter 6. So John says, I saw the, the lamb, when the lamb opened one of the seals, okay? And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder and one of the four beasts saying, come and see, okay? So he begins to open one of the seals, the releasing of the seals into the earth. Okay, the releasing of the angels, because that's what they are, into the earth and what their assignment is in the earth. And he goes on to say, verse, t, verse 2, I saw and behold a white horse. He that sat on that white horse, horse had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went forth to conquering and to conquer. Okay, he went forth to conquer and to conquering. And when he had opened Let's stick with this first seal, okay? So going into that seal, that first angel that was released into the earth to conquer and for conquering. And again, all of these seals are released on behalf of the heavens through the power of the Holy Spirit and revelation with Christ Jesus and salvation, okay? Now, we have this uh, conquering to deal with the conquering seal and the angel that is sent into the earth to conquer. We see Jesus Christ explaining that in, let's see here, Romans chapter 8. Explaining the spirit of conquering. Romans chapter 8. And 37, where he tells us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, that's Paul telling us that we become conquerors in Christ Jesus, okay, because of his love. Matthew 28, in the Gospels, Jesus is going to tell you and tells us, tells the kingdom, and makes it specifically known, Matthew 28 Verse 18, Matthew 28, Jesus came unto them and spoke and he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay, so all power has been given unto Christ Jesus. Another scripture we want to take a look at because we're looking at and um, making the reference to the first seal and salvation and how Christ Jesus said that he is a conqueror. He came to conquer the darkness, the enemy's kingdom, okay, and to remove that kingdom from having uh, any type of jurisdiction over God's kingdom, okay, any type of dominion over God's kingdom. Christ came to conquer that, to stop that, to prevent that, to put a halt to all of that. So in, in doing that, we become conquerors in Christ Jesus because we also go forward through that power of that spirit to conquer also those that are afflicted by the kingdom and want to come into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, want to be born again and to be relieved of that affliction of the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of the devil. Okay, so then going on, he says, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. There went out another horse that was red, and the power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Okay, so this particular angel, power was given to him to take peace from the earth. Okay, so as we take a look at... Uh, Matthew 10 and verse 34, what Christ Jesus said in reference to this scripture or to that uh, angel. So Matthew 10 verse 34, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. 
I came not to send peace, but a sword. Okay? But a sword. So that is what Christ said here. And as he releases this angel with the sword of the word, power is the word of God, to go forward and to not bring peace. Okay? And, and, and in understanding what Christ is saying, because it's not like he's going forward to just kill, you know, try to do things to people to break up their peace, but no salvation in the land is going, it does bring uh, not peace because there are going to be some that won't believe that Christ is the Savior, that God is the Creator. And so in doing that, that's going to make uh, things not be peaceful. You know what I mean? Because it's going to cause friction because one is going to believe one in Christ Jesus and one is going to not believe in Christ Jesus. Okay? So therefore, there will not be peace between mankind. Okay, because there is an enemy's kingdom in the earth also. And, and those two are at enmity with God, flesh and spirit. Okay, so there's no peace with that. Okay, uh, then we go on to verse 5. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And behold, there was a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine. We know that the oil and the wine is the anointed, okay? Because they are filled with the oil of the Holy Ghost, the wine of the Spirit, hallelujah. And it says, and so he was given instruction not to hurt the anointed as he goes forth. That's the, uh, the angel. This is the third angel going forward. Okay, so then, um, and, and it's also noted in chapter, uh, let me see here, where is that? That's also noted in Matthew. Hmm. I don't have it noted here where that is, but it's also, it's noted in the word of God to, uh, and also in the revelation. And we're going to read about it more as we go forward with the chapters in the revelation book. How God decreed and declared to hurt, hurt not the anointed. Okay. So then with the fourth seal, verse seven. Uh, he says, when I opened this fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth beast saying, come and see. I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell. Followed with him, follow, uh, death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death and with beasts of the earth. Now that particular uh, angel is what we hear people say the death angel because because of the wrath of God, that angel carries the wrath of God and death and hell is distributed out to those individuals that that angel goes forward to because of the mistreatment of the kingdom of God, you know, and the backsliding. If an individual goes into backsliding away from the kingdom, because we can see in the book of Romans chapter one verses 18 through 21, where God tells us how his wrath is distributed to those that have once believed, but they then go um, go backwards and begin to not believe. And after they've tasted and seen that God is real and the power of his presence and all of that. So, you know, God's wrath is stored up for, unfortunately, individuals like that and those that don't want to believe because they are enemies to God. He, he considers them enemies and at an enmity with him. And then going on to verse 9, it says, And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which he held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brothers should be killed as they were should and that's the fulfillment of what would be the end in 
until he begins to go forward with his wrath upon those. So here we can see John is seeing a vision into the altar. Uh, and, uh, into the altar, he's able to see the souls, oh Jesus, that are about, oh, that have come unto the altar, okay? And they have been saved and they are waiting for the vindication of God to go forward in the earth because of how they've been mistreated and killed because of the word of God. All right, so then going into the sixth seal, as he begins to release this angelical sixth angel into the earth, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell unto the earth, and even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when, he, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand it? So this sixth uh, seal we see distributes the wrath of God. Let me make sure I have this clear for you, because I think I said that about another angel, and it should have been something totally different. The sixth angel reveals and um, releases the wrath of God into the earth, okay? That's what the sixth angel does. The fifth angel is able to release visions and revelations for the individual in the kingdom and for the kingdom of period to be able to see into the altar the souls and to know those in the earth that are saved sanctified and filled with the holy spirit the fourth angel the death angel which releases death and hell to those who don't come into the kingdom of god who have decided that they don't want to believe that salvation is real and of the kingdom of heaven and of the God that created them, okay? So they don't release, I, I think this is the one that I stated releases wrath. I didn't mean to make that statement, but they release death and hell to those who do not accept Christ Jesus as their savior, okay? Because that's where an individual goes, to death or to hell. And it's the sixth angel that releases the wrath, which would also conclude Romans chapter 1, verses uh, 18 through 21, where we can see the wrath of God being stored up for those who backslide out of the kingdom and refuse to repent and come back, and for those who just don't want to be a part of the kingdom either, and maybe have uh, done bad things to the kingdom, okay? So then the third as we took a look at the third seal, that was the, the seal that, um, let me see over here. The con This is the seal that brings in balances. Okay, the balance, which basically balances out the kingdom where the heavenly father has decreed and declared that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Matthew 20, verse 16, all that come into the kingdom will basically be treated the same. Okay. Even if those come into the kingdom last, they'll be also treated as those that came into the kingdom first. Those that were treated, came into the kingdom first, will also be treated as those that were that came into the kingdom last. So everybody in the kingdom will be treated the same because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all become one in the kingdom. So therefore, Jesus said that in the story that he spoke of in uh, Matthew 20. Let's go here to Matthew 20, where we can see Matthew 20 and begins with, uh, let's see here, verses 1 all the way through 16, where he says, so the last shall be first, the first last, for many be called, but few chosen, okay, but all will be the same, and that angel the third angel is the angel that orchestrates that process in the earth, okay, where each individual that comes into the kingdom uh, basically receives the same because we're all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, so let me see here. 
So I just wanted to go back into explaining and making sure that we're understanding the, the angels that were sealed and that were released into the earth and what their uh, commission was and is in the earth as they go forward with it. And they are going forward with it right now, okay, because they have been re released in the earth and um, we can see the effects of all of these things going forward in the kingdom. All right, so that is going to bring me to the conclusion, pretty much chapter six in the book of Revelation. God bless you, God be with you, and I will see you as we go forward here on our Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel.